Hello you and welcome to some kind of fox content and welcome back to First Snow, the visual novel Christmassy thing that we're doing here. And it's about, we might melt the snow with this one because it seems like it's about to get semi-steamy for now. Um, hopefully I don't have to blur anything. Well, um, we only got a couple of days before uh, time runs out and it's Christmas and people are celebrating and whatnot. So uh, without further ado, let's just head into it and say hello you and welcome to First Snow. As Eileen sets her previous painting on the kitchen counter, I pop into the bathroom. Oh, hang on, let me turn on turn down the game a little. I can't hear myself. My heart's practically in my mouth as I reappear in the room with a towel wrapped around me, precious little being covered as I take my place before her. Should I stand like this or She looks at me for a few moments in serious thought. It's a little interesting how quickly her demeanor changes to that of a painter, carefully considering how best to use my body as an artistic prop. Try turning around so your back's towards me. My thoughts are in a haze, unable to let go of how exposed I am. All I can do is nod and dutifully do as she says. I give a nod, trying to relax as much as I can. That isn't saying much, though. There's no other sound in the room as she starts sketching me out, the pencil sharp scratching, filling the air. It's certainly an odd experience to think somebody's looking at my body so analytically, taking in every detail, considering it, and copying it to canvas. For Eileen's sake, I try to keep as still as possible, despite the butterflies in my stomach. Her pencil work apparently finished, the gentle sound of brush strokes starts as her painting begins, begins in earnest. She's fast at her sketching. I suppose she'd have a good bit of practice at this. I can't see much at all with my head slightly down like this, but at least this position is easy to keep. Without anything in particular to focus my eyes on, I can't help but turn my thoughts inward. How do people do this without getting self-conscious? Nobody's ever looked at my naked body like this, carefully analyzing every curve and muscle. I wonder how I look to her right now. Am I gross? Compared to Eileen, I probably look plain at best. Hey, I know it's not easy, but can you try not to tense up so much? I glance back at Eileen, our eyes meet, and I force myself to face forward again, resuming my pose. Sorry. It's okay. Not too much longer. Her expression was so focused and anal analytical, I sometimes forget that serious artwork can take so much knowledge and logic as well as creativity. I really am just an art prop for her. That's good. If I remember that, this isn't so bad. Aline's done this plenty of times and I can trust her. I was the one who offered anyway. The reason I did this was to help her and now I can finally be a part of her true passion for, of painting. I feel the corners of my mouth talk a little at the idea. It makes me feel a little special that she's looking at me this way. While she's no doubt done life drawing, drawing before, this is something different. Only now do I realize that Eileen's brushstrokes has ceased. Just as I work up the will to question her, Eileen speaks up. All right, you can move now. A weight comes off me as my entire body slumps, a long breath escaping my lips. It feels like my entire body deflates. Thankfully that my duty has been ful fulfilled, I adjust the towel a little to ensure it doesn't slip off. My first thought is to go to where, <clears throat> to where I've carefully placed my clothes, 
Uh, but on the way, I'm distracted uh, by the sight of it. I'm left speechless. I have to resist the urge to reach out and touch it. This is how Eileen sees me, not gross nor plain. I feel my heart sting a little as my eyes move across the canvas, seeing through Eileen's eye how she sees me. As I stand gazing at the painting, I feel a coat come over me, Eileen draping it over my shoulders. I'm about to thank her before the words are stolen from my mouth by her different demeanor. Compared to her intense focus while painting, her gaze awkwardly avoids my appreciative expression. All I can do is smile as I clasp the coat tight, the bashful Eileen standing in silence beside me. The streetlights lead us along as we walk along the snow-dusted street. They are pinpricks of light piercing the evening's darkness. The two of us walk side by side without a word, the only sound being snow crunching underfoot. Far from the silence, uh, feeling oppressive, I'm rather glad that we don't need to fill the air with idle conversation. With our classes finished, I offered to repay her for the dinner she'd made for me. Hardly one to turn down a free meal, she readily accepted. It's not like that excuse to bring her over was a lie, as such, or at least that's what I tell myself. In truth, I want to be closer to Eileen. As I throw uh, furtive glances at her, uh, to her, I muse about how the times we are together feel different to when I'm with others. Her earnest yet clumsy attempts to help me feeling all the more re rewarding. I'm not sure, but I don't think these feelings are just friendships anymore. Hmm. You're lucky to live so close to school. <sighs> I still have no idea how you can hike all the way to your place every single day and not be exhausted. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't wimp out of walking. Being fit has its advantages. While I stop myself from imagining how fit Eileen's body is, ooh, I'm reminded that she's seen my own body. I cringe in embarrassment as I remember modeling for her the other day, trying to shake off the feeling before she noticed. Eventually, we reach the now familiar apartment building, the two of us stopping a moment. I'm a little surprised myself at how quickly I came to think of this place as home. The ill-maintained building feeling so foreboding at first. Everything here is so different to home. Right down to the street lights we stand under. Gone were the modern white lights of downtown and the suburbs. Replaced by dull orange lamps with occasionally, which occasionally flickered. Um, um well, here it is. I'm more than a little nervous about what she thinks of this new home after bringing her all the way here. Rather than judging me for, for it, she looks more to be careful studying it. My nervous attempts to read her stoic gaze gets me nowhere. Uh, looks nice. Uh, so what's your roommate like, anyway? No sooner do the words leave her mouth than she jumps from a hand latching tightly onto her shoulder. I didn't even notice her in the darkness. She must have been having a smoke outside when she saw us. Hey! Yo. As we sit at the dinner table, Eileen's gaze has trouble staying on us. I know those eyes well. They're those of a tourist, taking in everything around them while desperately trying to engrave it in memory or perhaps in order to judge my living conditions. I have to admit, this must look a bit shabby compared to her home. She surely worked out that I'm not exactly well off from the area already though. Compared to Eileen's apartment, ours is full with the artifacts of life. A couple stuffed animals, some movie posters and DVDs around the place. 
sorry. An aging console next to the television and various bits and bobs accumulated through the years litter the room. Eileen's eyes pass over it all, but she stays unusually subdued. Perhaps the reason isn't the room itself, but the person sitting across from her. Huh? Um, so this is where you live, huh? I'm sorry if it's a bit cold. The heating's having problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You mean ha having problem as usual. There goes trying to put up a front. I know it doesn't look great from the outside, but we try to keep the place nice to live in. Fixing leaks, giving the place a lick of paint, patching holes and all that. Get Alice in a crash course in handiwork too. It isn't much, but it's home. That gotta count for something, right? Um, it does. You've done a good job on making this place homely. You never told me you were this good at science and math, Allison. No wonder it seems so easy for you. She gestures towards the trophy on the side table and certificate on the wall above it, being awards from competitions I won in high school. Huh? Um, well, um. you never asked. Allison. What? Seriously? Allison, come on. I earn a playful clip over the head, Eileen snorting in amusement. She was good enough to get a signed scholarship thanks to that brain of hers. Never having been great at knowing how to respond to praise, I just hang my head. It feels a little embarrassing to be complimented in front of Eileen. Hmm. Makes sense. She's got me out of a jam a few times now. She's a handy person to have around. I feel myself flower into a blush at the words, sinking lower into my chair as my face feels hot. I'm surprised how nice it feels despite being so awkward. A smile spreads on my face as my legs sway beneath the table in wit unexpected energy. It feels different when it comes from Eileen. Thanks. Thanks for the food, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing. Nice to finally meet someone from Allison's side of the fence for a change, actually. I was starting to get worried that she didn't have any friends. I can only bring my hand to my face as Eileen raises an eyebrow in pointed interest. I do with Rose... Uh, I do wish Rose wouldn't make such a big deal of me of my being shy. Huh? Really? Not exactly the outgoing type, I guess. I'm shocked. She takes a large sip of the soda before her before continuing on. Um, there's a few of us here in her little circle now. No thanks to her dragging me into a club. I'm lean. You agreed to come. It's Caprice's club anyway. <laughs> oh, so now you have nothing to do with it? This is a new story. All I can do is grimace as Eileen lifts an eyebrow, getting the rise out of me that she wanted. She softens the blow a little with a small notch from her shoulder, earning a smile from Rose. Eileen gives a mighty yawn, poorly hidden by a hand over her mouth. I don't think I've seen her bother trying to hide one before. Sorry. Tired? Um, I'm always tired. What's with the bags under your eyes, anyway? Rough night? Insomnia. It's fun stuff. Yeah, I feel ya. Here was trying to be tactful in not bringing that up and Rose just kicks down the door as usual. That does give some context to Eileen's short fuse though, though I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Well, they say good, wholesome food can fix that. That or cigarettes. Hopefully this will pick you up a bit. Uh, nothing says homemade like burgers and fries after all. As the two talk, I quietly begin on my food. I hadn't realized how empty I was, the flies disappearing into my mouth at a, at a quick pace. Thank goodness for having good metabolism. <laughs> Someone's hungry. I look up quizzically at her, drawing a raised eyebrow. It's only now I realize my cheeks are as full as a chipmunk's. Hmm. Good to see you two getting along well. Rose takes a hold of my shoulder and gives a playful shake, my head bobbing to and fro as I try to avoid choking on the fry on its way down. Allison's fine. 
quite a quiet as a muse and manages to put up with my crap. <laughs> uh, considering how much she takes care of chores and errands, I can't really complain. You mean considering how nice of a person I am, right? I've ever well with that too. The three of us munch away on our food, the quiet sound of cars outside and prattling from the television, providing what little noise there is to be heard. It seems like Eileen is starting to settle, which is a relief. It took me a while myself when I first met Rose. Um, surprised you two can keep your figures eating this kind of stuff. You don't have it often, do you? Rose and I share a quick glance. No. No, not at all. Um, not often, just special events. There we go, falling a loaf of Eileen's judgment. Should just get a rice cooker, buy rice in bulk, grab, grab some vegetable packets, throw them together, easy, cheap, healthier than takeout. I have to admit, it was nice when I dated a guy who could cook, but then he stopped smoking and I was like, you're out of here, dude. Having her around doesn't make things too awkward when you bring guys over. You learn to be quiet. I guess you would. I frown at the both of them. I don't want to hear about this. If you didn't know already, that means I've been doing a good job. Rose's comment only causes my frown to deepen. I can feel myself blushing just from the topic of conversation, which just embarrasses me more. Besides, if you ever get a boyfriend, you're going to have to learn too if you want to bring him around here. Uh, I won't be doing anything like that. <laughs> Rose laughs and even Eileen looks amused. I sulk, hating that the attention has been centered on me now. I especially don't want this kind of conversation around Eileen. Thankfully, Rose seems content with her teasing. Uh, so what's your story? You're friends of Allison, right? Turned out that way. Just another student at the community college majoring in art. The archie type, huh? Going for the big box then. Thanks. I'm sure you'll find something, hopefully not involving burgers and fries. Eileen, Eileen's limits are clearly being tested, being less tolerant of being poked at than I. Hopefully Rose realizes it. Uh, you seem like the artsy type yourself. What's with all the ink? Eileen motions to Rose's left side while brandishing a french fry, the tattoo on her upper arm only made more noticeable by her tank top. Looks cool. Seriously? Uh-huh. Expected it to be my life story or something. Uh, that was my first... Yeah. Wait, no, forget I said that. I'm in the Yakuza and they gave me these as my initiation. Uh, nothing says Yakuza like a biker in Middle America. As Rose's chest heaves with light-hearted laughter, I find myself smiling as well. I'm glad the two get along, though a little part of me wishes I could be like Eileen. It took me months to warm up to Rose, yet Eileen gets on with others so smoothly. Standing in front of the apartment once more, we say our goodbyes for real this time. Even if she pointedly refused, refused Rose's latter offer of transport, at least she'll be going home on a full stomach. It's an odd atmosphere. It's time to say our goodbyes, especially given the night's chill having set in. But neither of us quite want to say the words. When you said you had a roommate, that's the last kind of person I expected you to be shacked up with. Rose is nice. Once she's a Oops. family friend. Sorry, misclick. So I guess you could say I got this apartment through connections. Eileen's not really wrong, though. Ever since starting at community college, I'm f I've gone from having having a couple of very alike friends at high school to an increasing menagerie of odd characters. The way Eileen looks as she gazes at the building catches me off guard. 
It's hardly the comfortable existence she seems to have. Rose and I pretty much eking out a living with what scraps we get. Yet, she looks so wistful. You really have a nice thing going, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Um, if you ever want to visit again, you're definitely welcome. She gives an amused snort and a smile. <laughs> I'll have to take you up on that sometime. Moments tick by as the two of us stand out on the sidewalk, neither quite, know neither quite knowing what to say next. I want her to stay around some more to talk to, but I know it's already getting late. Idly thinking over our dinner together for something to talk with her about, one particular part of the conversation keeps sticking out. We're playing it in my head. I can feel my face going red before I can cover it with my hands. What's wrong? Uh, I can't believe oh. Rose was talking about that kind of stuff, even though you've just met her. Sorry about that. That's all right. I'm the one who brought it up. That's right. You're just as bad. I give her shoulder a firm tap, immediately feeling conscious of the gesture. I pull away from her and look elsewhere, fuming away in my embarrassment. Eileen's rock hard... <laughs> wow. Eileen rocks back and forth between her heels and the ball of her feet to pass the time while I recover, hands not quite knowing what to do. Eventually, thankfully, Eileen breaks the silence between us. some spoiled little delicate flower when I first met you. You know, the kind who coasts along on their parents' attention before the real world punches them in the face. It looks like you have your life pretty sorted, though. You've got a good head on your shoulders, friends, and a cool roommate. You've managed to scratch together a pretty decent life for yourself. She just gives a long breath, rocking back and forth on her feet as she tries to put some words together. I want to thank her for the kind words, but I'm left speechless after such a warm-hearted appraisal of my current world. I don't really know what to say now. I guess I feel a bit dumb for lecturing you so much. It's fine, really. My frantic brushing off of the idea puts the both of us back on the back foot. Smiling with that wonderful rare smile of hers, she seems to accept the situation. Before I can say anything more, the blonde girl turns to begin the long walk back home. Without looking back, Eileen simply raises her hand into the air as she strolls off down the road. She's as confident as ever. Things just happened around me and I worked problems out as they occurred. Is that really worth respect? It feels strange to have someone I admire to turn that right back to me. I feel my heart sting as her figure gets smaller in the dark night sky, but there's nothing I can say or do. Just watch her go. Oh. The cold night's breeze wafts past the balcony, my thin jacket doing little to stop it. The only noise uh, to be heard is the odd car rushing down the street through the darkness or snippets of mus muffled music from neighboring apartments. Moments like this un uh, are nice, circumstances aside, just being able to be alone with my thoughts without the distraction of others. That said, I already have my answer to what had been on my mind. That was the real point of this dinner, after all. When I modeled for her, I wanted to be part of something that was important to Eileen. Even before then, I wonder if the times I tried to get closer weren't out of friendship alone. What if what I felt as I watched Eileen walk away was all the confirmation of my feelings I needed? A dark figure suddenly appears, taking no heed of my surprise as, I, as it leans against the balcony beside me. 
As I compose myself once more, the familiar acrid smell passing my nose tips me off before my eyes do. Don't scare me like that! Hey, I called out. Not my fault you were daydreaming. Her mention of it brings all my worries flooding right back. Hardly want to look at Rose while thinking about all this. I turn back and try to ignore her as best I can. Rose mentioned how I should think about finding a partner sometime while in college. My parents too, and even my high school friends before I came. I was content to focus on school and keep such complications out of my mind uh, until my life was all set up and ready. College has already set me right on that account. Life doesn't go on, on hold until you're ready to face it. Rose simply blows a puff of smoke, a th thin stream passing her lips and disappearing into the night sky. I try to keep my mouth shut, but the smell proves too much for me as I bring my hand to my face. <coughs> That's terrible. <coughs> you're the one who banishes me here, remember? I hate to admit it, but she does have a point. Rose stubbornly makes a point of taking a puff of her cigarettes, uh, but soon notices that something is amiss. Come on, out with it. What's on your mind? It'd be easy enough to wave her off. One of the things I like about Rose is that she knows when to step back, and this is the kind of thing plenty of people keep private. But somehow, even if I haven't told Eileen how I felt, I kind of want someone else to know. I think... I like someone. I watch her reaction with the best attempt I can muster at casual interest. I'm surprised by how... unsurprised Rose is. After a tortuously long time, she finishes her puff of the cigarette and takes it from her mouth. Someone with that on the mind. It's that Eileen girl, right? My mind blanks. She picked that up herself? She isn't taken off guard by my liking of a girl at all. The knot of anxiety I hadn't even noticed forming inside of me suddenly twists and turns. The expected spluttering explanation suddenly not needed. I psyched myself up so much only for it to go nowhere. The silence between us continues as Rose patiently waits for me to respond. It's just, what's supposed to come after saying that? I didn't think you knew. About Eileen, or, you know. Well, I mean, kinda hard to ignore what's in front of your face, you know. Seeing you two together, it all clicked. You don't think I'm weird? No, why would you be weird? Apparently feeling a little more sure of what to say, she gives a disarming smile. Believe me, I'm not in any position to call someone weird. Oh, what's happening? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, that's not what you're supposed to say. <clears throat> she elbows me in response to my mostly unintentional bite back. With the situation diffused, I'm, I'm managed to calm down a little. Just saying I like her makes my thoughts feel all the more real, my heart skipping a beat as I repeat the words in my mind. Rose thinks to herself a little before snuffing out her cigarette on the ashtray and looking at me squarely. Sorry, I shouldn't be so flippant when you're all worked up. I get that coming out can be hard. For what it's worth, I really appreciate that you trust me so much. The warm smile on her face proves infectious, all tension from the air fading away. I hardly mind now that I've managed to unwind a little. I get the feeling she's stumbling through this herself. Minutes go by with only the passing of cars beneath us for noise, both of us savoring the peacefulness of the winter's night. At loose ends, I lean against the balcony railing and finally break the silence. What should I do? I don't think that's something I can decide for you. 
Just remember that you're still young. So you don't think it'll work out? I'm not saying that. Just take it easy, alright? Relationships are a pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. This isn't what I'd hoped Rose would say at all, but that doesn't mean she's wrong. I thought love was supposed to feel all happy and warm, but I feel more nervous than anything else. Welcome to relationships. Falling for someone is easy. It's what comes next that's hard. Yep. Her disarming smile at least puts me a little more at ease. I'm glad I have Rose here for me. In many ways, I feel like we can't, we can't relate to each other, but we can still have this kind of conversation and understood, understand each other. We're just two girls talking about love. You're a good girl, Allison. I promise that whatever happens, you can call on me. Okay? Thanks. But, you know, if things do work out, you're still gonna have to learn how to be quiet for my sake if you bring her around. Froze. <laughs> While I'd had my doubts, the city workers managed to get the Christmas tree in the city's main square finished just on schedule for the first day of December. It's oversized tinsels and baubles gleam happily in the morning's light, proudly announcing the coming holiday. Rose takes my pause in the middle of the city square as an excuse for a break, setting down her backs setting her backs down as I look up on the, to the huge tree uh, before us. It's not the tree that's most interesting, so much as the crowd around us. Everyone walks to and fro just a little faster than normal walking speed, hurrying from shop to shop while hardly even glancing at the Christmas tree looming over everything. I think I read something once about feeling alone even in a crowd. So many faces pass by, from couples holding hands, to businessmen, uh, to groups of friends, yet I feel more disconnected than when I'm actually alone. The clicking of a lighter next to me reminds me of my companion, the cigarette now perched in the corner of her mouth, glowing brightly. Uh, shame we couldn't park closer. Downtown's pretty crazy- or oh, sorry, downtown's pretty crazy these days, isn't it? Maybe we should put up our own Christmas tree. Hey, I got a tree for us a few days ago. I was the one who bought that. It also f it's also like a foot tall. Cigarette perched in her mouth tilts downward as she looks at me, her smiling turning just a little less cheerful. Missing ho missing holidays at home, are you? Sorry, <laughs> I it must be the cigarette. My voice is all over the place. She clamps onto my shoulder and gives me a firm shake. Hang in there. I might not be much company, but at least you've got someone around. <coughs> <coughs> Rose, you're killing me. <coughs> Jesus. Were you homesick when you first moved out from home? No. Hang on. Rose is really doing my voice a hacking, given the circumstances. No. I don't think you appreciate how lucky you are sometimes. Wandered straight onto that landmine. Rose has, has never talked about her... <clears throat> wow. Immediate family in the few months I've known her, so maybe I should have taken the hint. Noticing the gaze of a few around us has have turned upward. I look up curiously. Looks like the weather's turned, the morning chills turning to snow. Piss off, winter. With a dissatisf dissatisfied puff, she puts out her cigarette on a nearby bin lid before flicking it in 
flicking it in with a practiced motion. Taking her backs up once more, we continued the slog back to the bike. Chinabe, I was gonna say this later, but I bought your favorite while you weren't looking. Oh. Uh -huh. Strawberry trifle? You know it. Just a thanks for pulling your weight a bit more. Jesus, finally. It's nice to see you getting yourself together. Just as I'm about to thank her, a loud ping comes from my pocket. A little sheepish. Uh, I take my phone from my pocket to check what the message is. Uh-oh. Confused, I stopped walking and turn about. Eileen holds her hand high as she slowly walks up the street, slipping her phone into her pocket as she arrives. I'm happy to see her, but something makes me hesitate. Something Rose picks up picks up on, going by her churlish grin. I know full well I've fallen for Eileen. My stomach tying itself into knots at the sight of her makes me realize that asking her out will have to come sooner rather than later, if she's even interested in girls, that is. Trying to put my worries out of my mind as best I can, I do my best to act natural. Act natural! Act natural! Rose, start smoking! You sure been getting some use out of that phone? Morning. Starting to see the appeal of these things. Yeah. Morning, Rose. Hi. Sup. Just out for a walk. The apartment gets stifling after a while. Not interrupting anything, am I? When she puts it like that, she found she sounds far older than she should. In fact, given she didn't own a smartphone, like simple likes simple walks alone and spend her days painting, I'm starting to doubt the girl I fell for is really my own age. As the two strikes up a casual chat, I remember how Eileen and I came to meet, being pushed into the club, taking chance after chance to come closer to her in hopes of spending more time together. It's only that persistence, it's only that persistence which gained me her friendship. My heart begins to beat as I talk myself into the plan forming in my head. Pushing myself got me this far. Perhaps if I could take one more step. Um. Hey, Rose, can I leave these with you? She hesitates at the change of plans. The words blurted out before I can stop myself. Sure. Sure, I'll see you later. If you need a pickup, just call. Before I can so much as thank her, Rose quickly starts the work of strapping the shopping bags to her bike. It'll probably be easier to get everything home without me on the bag anyway. Eileen and I give her our goodbyes. Give our good. Wait. Eileen and I give her our goodbyes to her as we walk on. Rose waving us off as we go. I think I see a small grin on her face. I guess she worked it out. Once again, we are alone with each other. My stomach twists and turns as I desperately try to find some small talk to fill the air with. Not that Eileen looks fussed about it at all. Buried in thought, I barely register us moving through the old route iron gates and into the city park. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I misclicked something. There we go. The water in the ponds lies nearly still, the ducks lazily bobbing about with the odd flap of their wings to shake off the snow. The normal rustling branches of the trees stay silent as they gather falling snow, green slowly turning into white. With everybody in town busy shopping, all that's to be heard as we walk along the white paths are our footsteps on freshly fallen snow. Ah, so, do you come here much? Yeah, every so often. Nice to just think uh, to myself a bit without being coped up. And you? <laughs> uh, only when I was younger. I like to feed uh, bread to the dogs. You shouldn't do that. Bread is bad for dogs. Hmm? <laughs> I feel like I should have guessed that answer from you. All I can do is pout as she gives a smug smile at my expense. 
Even as we walk on through the otherwise empty park, I can feel my eyes lingering on her. That difference between us is probably what drew me to her now that I think about it. I've never felt like this towards anyone else before, but I know my feelings are genuine as I gaze at her. If she spends Christmas with her family, I won't get to see Aileen again until classes start in the new year. Telling her what I feel might ruin everything, but I don't want this to linger like a hanging thread. If she can push herself uh, towards her goals, then so can I. As I come to a stop, the ceasing of my footsteps on the crushed snow makes Eileen turn towards me. As her all wow. As her eyes fall to mine, my heart begins to race. I'm instantly filled with doubts, but now it's too late. I've psyched myself up so much that it's surely showing. All my life, others have helped me push me forwards. Now I have to do something for myself. Eileen taught me how to ha Nah, Eileen taught me how I have to do that. Eileen, I wanted to tell you something. With my voice shaking and a hand clutching my other arm tightly out of nervousness, I take a long breath to clear my mind and sort out the words in my head. I ball my fist as I feel my hands shaking. This isn't exactly poetry so far, but I think I'm getting my feelings across right. Eileen simply looks at me, accepting the praise with only a touch of confusion. That will have to wait until the next episode, because for now, I thank you so much for watching, and until the next time. Bye!